Hello everybody. Uh, today we start with a new chapter in Standard 9th ICSC that is Biology chapter number 12 Skeleton Movement and Locomotion. So this is basically about the bones, the joints, the muscles. So the one which is going to help us to do the movement and the locomotion that is movement of our body that is the skeletal system which is the bones basically the mainly the different kind of bones the different kind of joints which are connecting the bones and also uh, the muscles which are moving or making us the movement possible <coughs> so skeletal <coughs> movement and locomotion most animals are characterized by a definite shape and a capacity for movement of the different parts of the body so you find that each and every organism when you take it has got a particular shape so by the shape you know that okay this is a lion this is a tiger this is a man this is an animal okay so that particular you are able to know because each and every has got its shape and accordingly they will also have their own way of moving okay the movement will be also there these movements also help the animal in locomotion, that is, movement from place to place. These functions are performed by the skeleton and the muscles together. So the movement, the complete movement of the body is going to be taken care of, or is going to be taken care of by the uh, bones, that is the skeletal system, and the muscles which are connecting to it. So the functions of the human skeleton. So let's see the what are the functions. So there are basically six different functions of the human skeleton. So let's see one by one. The skeleton in our body serves six main purpose. The first one is support and shape. So the first thing what it does is give support and shape to the body. The skeleton provides a support or framework to all the soft parts and gives the body and its parts a definite shape. Imagine if you do not have small pieces of bones phalanges in your fingers, would you be able to hold a pen in your hand? No. If this would have not been able to bend like this and it would have been straight like this, you will not be able to, you know, holding it will be like this and writing it will be, I don't know how it easy it would be to write without gripping it properly. So that's right. So uh, the, it is the small 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 bones which are there which are connected together to give rise to this particular kind of movement possible for our hands an example of shape and support uh, just hold your ears try to fold it and then leave it free it resumes its shape now feel its interior it is tough but flexible this is due to the cartilage skeleton inside it this is which is giving it support as well as the shape so you can see the ear if you press it like this it comes back to the earlier position so when you are feeling it you feel that there is okay some hard material even the this part over here there is some hard material which is so you can press it you can bend it but when you release it it will come back to its original position so there are the cartilages which are present which is going to make it a, a definite shape the second one is protection the second thing about the skeleton is to give protection several delicate and important organs are well protected by a casing of bones for example the skull protects the brain the vertebral column backbone protects the spinal cord the ribs protect the heart and lungs and so on so you can see that most of the very very vital organs of a body are protected by bones so the skull that's the main part the brain is the most important part of a body that is always being completely covered by the skull the skull is encapsulating the whole uh, brain that's why the skull supports or protects the uh, brain similarly the rib cage protects the heart and the lungs okay so in this way you are going to have even the spinal cord the spinal cord is having is is covered by the vertebral column so the vertebral column the bones the vertebral columns are there which is going to the backbone or the vertebral column is the one which is going to support or sorry not support protect the spinal cord the third is movement so the third 
is movement. So many bones are joined to each other in a manner that one bone can be moved on another. This movement are brought about by muscles which originate on one bone and are inserted on another. So the movement like this one. So this bone can be put on another that is on this bone. So ye bone or ye bone in How is it possible? Because here se ye muscle expand or ye contract hoga. That's why the hand is folding like this. The hand is like this is also one movement. So all these movements are going to be taking place because of the skeletal system. That is bones. The fourth is leverage. Leverage. Now, some bones and joints form livers. Now, livers will be, uh, you must have already studied in physics earlier that livers are of four, three kinds class one, class two, class three. So, fulcrum is in the center, and so So, basically, the bones also work as a liver, which will help you to lift loads easily and with less amount of effort. So the main purpose of the liver is that it is enabling us to lift the loads easily without much of an effort. So that is called as a leverage. So some bones and joints form livers that increase the speed and distance of movement of the muscle. For example, contraction of, of only a few centimeters by the bicep muscles swings the arms swiftly through an arc of motion that more than a a foot so you can see that it is contracting just this muscles are just contracting a bit just by some few centimeters and the whole arm is swinging over here so the this is nothing but the formation of a liver so a small effort put over here is able to manage a complete movement of the hands fifth is formation of blood cells so form formation of blood cells so in our long bones whatever our long bones like the thigh bone the so uh, certain types of bone cells including our red and white blood cells are formed in the tissues of the central hollow space of or the marrow of some of the long bones such as the femur so the thigh bone is one of the longest long bone which is called as a femur bone we'll understand this long bones later on that's why i did not give much examples initially because we are going to learn it in a detailed manner later on so uh, those uh, bones they are you know the cross section is bigger and the hollow part in between the hollow part in between the bone section is is uh, having a fluid which is called as a bone marrow and the bone marrow is uh, the function of the bone marrow is to produce RBC and WBC the red blood cells and the, and the white blood cells are going to be produced by these bone marrow so that's why the fifth form this uh, characteristic or the functions of the skeleton is to formation of blood cells and finally the bones are the storehouse of calcium and phosphorus for the rest of the body so the complete body ke andar ka jo phosphorus and calcium hai, those ka storage the storage of calcium and phosphorus in the body is going to be taking place inside the bone so that's why the next thing is storage of calcium and phosphorus so hence we can see that these are the six functions of the skeleton First one being support and give shape to the body, protection to the vital organs of the body, movement of the complete body, leverage in the form of you know easy movement of the body, formation of blood cells and storage of calcium and phosphorus. So these are the six uh, very important functions of the human skeleton. Now let's see what does the skeleton composed of or what is the constituents of the human skeleton. Our skeleton consists of bones, cartilages and ligaments. Bones comprises the heart framework of the body. So the bones are the heart frame, the complete heart framework of the body which is there is the bones. <clears throat> cartilages are the supporting and connective structures. For example, the cartilage supporting the <clears throat> projecting external ears and the tip of the nose. So these are the cartilages. So cartilages are the ones which are going to be supporting and connecting kind of tissues. And the finally are the ligaments which binds the bone together. 
Okay, so ligaments are the third one which are binding the bones together. So let's see what is a bone first. So let's start with the bones. So a bone is the chief component of our skeleton. It consists of organic and inorganic material. The inorganic part constitutes nearly two thirds of the entire bone substance and includes mainly the compounds of calcium and phosphorus. If a bone is placed in weak hydrochloric acid, the mineral part is removed from it, get dissolved and the remaining organic framework is left behind. Such a bone is called decalcified or calcium removed bone and is soft and flexible which can even be tied into a knot. So you can see that the bone is composed of two kinds of substances. One is an organic material, another is an inorganic material. Organic material is the one which is the you know, the uh, proteins and the carbohydrates and uske, uske isse jo, that is the organic part. The inorganic part is the minerals, so calcium, phosphorus, these are the minerals which are present. So if I take a pore and I put it into hydrochloric acid, what will happen is the calcium and the phosphorus present in the bone will get dissolved in it and hence what will remain will be only the inorganic part. And the inorganic part of the bone is always such that it is soft. And that's why the whole bone will become so soft that you can even tie a knot of it. You can even, just like a rope, if you can tie a knot of it. So that's the uh, inorganic and So the one, if you are removing the calcium from the bone, it is called as decalcified bone. On the other hand, if the bone is strongly heated, its organic matter is destroyed and only the mineral part will remain. So if it is burned uh, strongly, the organic part will get destroyed and what, so what will remain will only be the mineral part and this such a bone turns brittle and quickly breaks. With age as in old people, the organic part of the bone is reduced and the bones become more fragile, taking much time in rejoining after a fracture. So, that's basically what happens is when a person gets older, he will not be able to retain the organic material of the bone and due to this, the bone will automatically become more brittle and once it is brittle, it is uh, in old ages, it is very difficult to rejoin those bones and that's why it's very, very, uh, you know, tedious for a person to stay, you know, old people ka fractures ko repair ho na, bought time lagta. So that's the problem. Now, uh, let's see the classification of the bones on the basis of the shape. So, bones are classified by the shape into four categories. First, shape-wise bones are classified into long, short, flat and irregular bones. So, one are long bones. So, the long bones, so the one which are long le lengthwise, they are the long bones. Short bones are shorter in size. The flat bones are literally, they are flat in nature. So, they are just... Of, you know, uh, like plate like structures, so flat bones and irregular means they could be of any shape, like the vertebral column. You know, it is of some random shape, so that's why irregular. And they are given you in this in the form of a flow chart, which is given on the top of the page. That is, long bones consist of a shaft with a knob at each end. So the long bone will be like this, it will be a long bone and it will be having a shaft on each and a top. Uh, the corners or edges will be having a knob like structure shaft is thick walled thick walled tubular filled with yellow marrow ends are spongy so these ends are spongy but there is a shaft is filled with yellow marrow inside so inside there will be yellow marrow uh, and its and ends are spongy for example bones of the arms legs chest, ribs, ribs are long ones, okay, uh, they are the long bones and these will, will be the one which will be also producing the RBCs and WBCs for the body. The short bones are box like, spongy bones uh, show little movement like that of the ankle, the wrist, okay, so these are the short bones, very tiny ones, small, small ones. Flat bones composed of two or more parallel plates of uh, compact bones. <clears throat> enclosing uh, spongy bones for example shoulder blade the shoulder blade over here is a flat kind of a thing the skull the sternum they are all flat bones and irregular bones complex shape 
uh, amount of bone tissue varies compact and spongy like the facial bones the facial bones are you know they are different and the vertebral column vertebral vertebral bones the structure of a typical bone that is thigh bone is shown in the figure 12.1 it is highly calcified mineralized hard and rigid connectivity tissue it is very strong and can withstand severe stresses it consists of bone cells arranged in the form of concentric rings embedded in a ground matrix in which collagen <coughs> Collagen fibers and mineral salts, calcium and phosphorus are deposited. So you can see over here the long bones are going to be of uh, highly calcified. You will be have a lot of minerals in it, and uh, they will be very strong and rigid connectivity. And uh, they are very strong and then can withstand a severe stress. Now you can see that the thigh bone are the strongest bone of our body because they are the one which are going to take the maximum amount of load at any time. While you are stand, you are, when you are sitting or when you are standing up from a sitting position or when you are walking, every time the thigh bone is the one which is going to be directly in the contact or in in action. Okay, so uh, they are uh, strong. They are in concentric circular forms and embedded in ground matrix. Uh, and of course, they will be having some collagen fibers and mineral salts to combine uh, deposited on that particular fibers. The external surface of the bone is covered by a membrane called <clears throat> periosteum which consists of outer fibrous and inner cellular layer and richly supplied with blood cells. So the external surface, the outer part over there is richly supplied with blood cells and they have got a membrane which is consisting of outer and inner fibrous uh, cellular layers. A long bone has a hollow cavity in the middle which is filled with bone marrow. Bo marrow are of two types. One is yellow marrow made up of adipose tissue and blood vessels which give rise to white blood cells. So the yellow marrow produces white blood cells and the other is red marrow which is present at the ends of the ends and produces red blood cells. So you can see any particular bone will have two kind of marrow, the yellow marrow in the center which is the producing the white blood cells and the red marrow which is in the ends which is producing the red blood cells. So that was all about the explanation about the bones and the structure of the bone and the different kinds of bones. Now we move on to the next part and that is the human skeleton. So let's see what does the human skeleton consist of. The human skeleton although consists of altogether consists of 206 bones including three very tiny bones in each year. That table number 12.1 gives a detailed region wise breakup of the total number of bones in the human skeleton. The skeleton has two main divisions the axial skeleton which includes the basic central framework of the body and the appendix skeleton which includes the bones of the limbs and girdles. So you can see that the uh, human skeleton is going to be of made up of two sections. One is the axial skeleton so that is the complete head, the neck region, the shoulder, the ribs, the spinal cord, the hip girdle. Okay, The complete part is the axial skeleton. The hands and the legs are the appendicular skeleton. So that's why we consider the two things. The total number of bones in our body are 206. There are 206 bones in all, a total together in our uh, body, which also includes totally six bones, three on this side and three on this side inside the ear, which are very, very tiny bones. That is the malus innus and stipes, which is present inside the ears. The excess skeleton consists of a skull, the vertebral column, the ribs and the sternum. So, okay, I think I made a mistake. I said that the shoulder girdle was included, but uh, no, it is not included. The shoulder girdle comes under the section of, yes, it comes under the appendicular skeleton. So, okay, so it is only the uh, skull the uh, and the vertebral column and the ribs and the sternum so that is the part which are then the exoskeleton 
skull is the skeleton of the head it contains two parts the upper top part the cranium or the brain box is made up of eight bones so this complete head you know this skull it is not a single one bone there is not a singular bone there are eight parts so there are eight bones connected over here and uh, we can say mainly because if it is one complete thing then in case of any in injury it would have been very problem because the whole thing would uh, automatically needs to be repaired whereas when it is slight when you know two pieces like this तो अगर यहाँ पे एक इंजरी आती है थोड़ा शॉक एब्जॉर्बेंस भी मिलेगा बिकॉज थोड़ा उसको फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी मिलेगा सो इफ इट इज कंटिन्यूस पार्ट देन इट कैन ब्रेक वेर इट इज इफ इट इज लाइक टू थ्री पार्ट सो इफ सम इम्पैक्ट इज देर देन ऑटोमेटिकली दैट इम्पैक्ट कैन बी टेकन इन इजिली बिकॉज इट इज ऑफ टू डिफरेंट पार्ट सो या सो Yeah, so the upper top part of the cranium, the brain box is made up of eight bones, which are so joined to each other they are permanently fixed. The other parts of the skull form the face, which contains a total of fourteen bones. So the face of us contains fourteen bones. Okay, right? This complete thing, the movement, all the movements, what you can see, the jaw, ye o, it the upper movement, ye jo hai, ye sab, they are fourteen bones uh, overall in the face. The upper and the lower jaw are also formed by some of these bones. The back part of the cranium contains a large hole, the foramen magnum, through which the spinal cord, after emerging from the brain, continues behind the backbone. So, the complete head, के नीचे यहाँ पे ये साइड पे, there is one hole through which the spinal cord is going to be going down into the vertebral column so that whole with that particular part over here uh, is called as the foramen magnum so foramen mag a uh, foramen magnum uh, which is uh, the from which the spinal cord arises emerges from the brain and runs into the spinal cord or uh, into the into the backbone the second is the vertebral column so after the skull is the next thing which is the vertebral column the complete part from here the backbone which is the vertebral column The vertebral or spinal column is popularly called the backbone. It comprises composed of total of thirty three individual or twenty six when fused. So you can see there are thirty three vertebral columns, but these thirty three columns mean the last five jo hai they are fused together. That's why we can consider it to be as twenty six. So uh, that's why the thirty three or twenty six when fused ring like bones called vertebrae. these are divided into five groups according to the region they occupy so this complete vertebral column right from the top to the bottom that is near the tailbone the complete region is divided into five segments okay so the first one will be the neck region so we see the regions uh the neck region has seven cervical vertebrae so this one the seven vertebrae here over here what are the seven vertebrae the columns are there the vertebrae are there they are called as the cervical they are the cervical vertebrae okay so cervical vertebrae then there are 12 which are thoracic so the ye thorax ke piche jo hai they are the 12 which are the thoracic region so the thoracic uh, vertebrae are there which are 12 in number Then there are five which is lumbar. The lumbar is the backbone. Yeah, me, me. Che, jo jisse movement apna hota. So that is the lumbar region. There are five of them. Okay. So seven plus twelve, so nineteen plus five is twenty-four. So there are the these are the main ones which are here. And then there are five sacrum which are fused into one. So there are five of them which are in the sacral region, which are uh, the lower back region. That is five of them fused together as one. and finally the four which are fused to one that is a coxa region that is a tailbone area so the last is a tailbone area there are four of them which are fused together as one so five fused to one and four fused to one that's why we have totally nine over there but we consider we can consider them as just two and then see we can see that 26 or else it is 33 vertebral column is curved to maintain the balance of the body in an erect position the curve absorbs pressure and shock while walking running and protecting the column from breaking so vertebral column is curved it is always curved it is not a straight thing in the vertebral column is not straight it is always in a yahan se aage jata hai aur yahan pe piche jata so it's a 
curve. So the curvature which is there is helping us to give take the shocks and while walking and running it is easier to balance ourselves. So that is uh, the main purpose why it is in a curved shape. The structure of the vertebra, each vertebra is a somewhat ring-like structure. Its lower part, front in actual position in the human body, is formed of a solid cylindrical bone called centrum uh, or a body of vertebrae. And the two opposite ends of the centrum are flat a flat okay so we see over here we can see the figure which is given over here so this is the figure of the uh, vertebrae which is given here so they see that they have got the uh, lower part lower, lower part okay, okay, lower part you like, okay, the, we are taking that vertebrae like this but actually the vertebrae get like this see the vertebrae is fixed over here in this form it is in this form so they are taking this part over here as the front part and this is the back part actually or which you remember yes it is so this is the lower part that's why you are considering it a lower part <clears throat> so it's from a solid uh, cylinder of both uh, cylinder of bone called the centrum uh, the opposite two ends of the centrum are flat on the dorsal side or the back side of the centrum is a canal that is neural canal so there is a neural canal which is there on the back side so end part means neural canal formed by the union of two neural arcs arising from the sides of the centrum in natural position the spinal cord runs through this neural canal neural spine is a flat longitudinal ridge projecting out, uh, upwards when from the meeting point of the two neural arcs so there will be two neural arcs ke beech mein, there will be uh, this point which is called as the neural arc or the, uh, and the complete spinal cord passes through this neural canal <coughs> neural spine is a flat longitudinal ridge projecting outwards for the meeting point of the two neural arcs transfer processes are thick sidewards so they are the ones the transfer processes are the side ka do edges so the one if we see the bone it was like the the, the this is somewhat like a this is a neural canal and this are the transfer projections over here like this okay <clears throat> the transfer processes are thick sideways projecting from the neural arc the neural arc also bears articular facets one in front and one at behind, behind on the either side which helps in joining the two vertebrates one behind the other a pad of cartilages in the intervertebral well, disc or distal forms a kind of cushion between the two vertebrates. So between the two vertebrates there is a cushion which is there which is also called as the disc. Now the disc when it slips and comes outside is nothing but what we call it as a slip disc. The slip disc is, means the disc has slipped from its position and that's why it is projecting outwards. So what you have to that is nothing but the slip disc which is a very common kind of a uh, problem in slightly uh, older age where people's back is very and very pain hota, so that is nothing but a slip disc is something like that next cervical vertebrae the first cervical vertebrae is called as the atlas the second vertebrae is the axis the atlas and the axis because that is the one which is helping us to move the head up and down and all the movement because the atlas and the axis which is over here <coughs> The remaining five neck vertebrates do not have any speci special names. Thoracic vertebrates have long neural spines which are directed backwards. Each of their transverse positions bear on its extremity a facet or articulates with the tubicle of the ribs. ribs. So these ones are thoracic rib, uh, vertebrates are the one jahan se ribs aise generate hoke hame bar nikalte. So the, that's why they have got a particular kind of a facet dot we can say that uh, holding position wherein the ribs can be framed or you can say the ribs can be placed right lomba vertebrae have well developed neural spine and transfer processions uh, which serve for the attachment of powerful back muscles so that is the lumbar body the powerful back muscle so they are always having much muscular control and they are the one which is going to be uh, much stronger or we can say <clears throat> yeah mm, powerful back muscles okay 
I would just say as a powerful back muscles. Okay, sacrum is a large bone formed by the fusion of five vertebrates. To it are articulated the hip bone on either side and the coxae is the last part of the backbone. It is made up of four fused vertebrates which represent the rudimentary tail of the human body. So, human body doesn't have a tail but yeah, if we consider it, we can say that is the tail bone we normally call it as. Sometimes babies are born with a small tail which the doctors usually remove. Uh, you have a photograph at the end of this thing in the review which says that there is small tail bone. So if the tail bone is slightly extended or bone then the, first, the baby will be having a small tail like structure which the doctor normally just gets uh, removed. The C is the sternum. The sternum or the breast bone is the long flat bone lying in the middle of the front of the chest. So the middle and the front of the chest is the sternum which is over here. And the D is the ribs. The ribs are the one which are the last one. These are the pairs of ribs. Uh, there, there are 12 pairs of ribs. So we have got 12 pairs of ribs uh, which along with the thoracic vertebral and sternum consider the bony cage or rib cage. The first seven pairs of the two ribs so out of the ribs which are there, the first seven are the true ribs. So right from the uh, front to the back, they are the complete ribs are there. So that forms the main rib cage. So there are two ribs, which are the first seven of them. <coughs> are attached to the, the uh, first seven are the ribs, are true ribs, are attached to the front of the sternum with the help of the helline cartilage. The eighth, ninth and tenth ribs do not articulate directly with the sternum but are joined to the 7th rib so these are the 8, 9 and 10 which are connected over here to the sternum through the 7th rib they are connecting to the, so 8th and 10th are connected to the 7th rib and then connected to the sternum <clears throat> but join the 7th rib with the help of a helene cartilage the last two that is 11th and 12th ribs do not uh, attach to the sternum and are therefore known as floating ribs so the last two which are coming over here they are just not connected to the uh, sternum at all and that's why they are called as the floating ribs. So this was the different parts of the axial skeleton. We now move on to the appendicular skeleton in the next video.